Hi, my name's Hans Hess. Thank you so much for joining me for my television broadcast today. It's Christmas season, so I'm talking about the wonder of Christmas. You know, John chapter 1 speaks of Jesus coming, the Word coming into the earth and becoming flesh, and that that was light, the light of God coming to illuminate our lives. So I'm going to take this word light and break it down for you this morning as we look into the Scripture. So open your hearts. Open your minds and, and let's go into the service now. If you know anything about your Bible, you know John chapter 1 is a real powerful passage about Jesus. And uh, usually we don't preach this when it comes to Christmas. We usually go to the Matthew stories or the Luke stories, which I'll get to. But I wanted to start from heaven's perspective. I wanted to start from the height because Christmas really is a wonder. Years ago, there was a uh, medieval theologian named Thomas Aquinas, and he, he liked to reason everything out. Matter of fact, he took Aristotle's works and basically Christianized them. And so if you read through Thomas's works, it's he's reasoning everything, everything, every, we can figure out everything. And he said, basically, you can figure out through logic most things about God if you just study and come to the right conclusions. But there are three things, he said, you could never figure out. These had to be given us by revelation. One is the Trinity. The second is the virgin birth. The third is the incarnation, when God became man. And so two of those wonders deal with Christmas alone. And so we're dealing with wonderment in this season. That's why it's so awesome. It's why it's so amazing. When we think about what God did, how He came to earth, it's a wonder, and it should always be a wonder. Like the kids looking at the Christmas tree. Or my cat looking at the Christmas tree. No. Why do we torture cats with Christmas trees? Anyhow. It's a wonder, right? Lights, Christmas town, trees, all that we do is, is just, we just want to show, the. I believe in celebrating Christmas. I've told you all that year after year. I believe in celebrating it. Let it be great for your kids. Let it be great for your family. Let it be an amazing time. Even though we weren't raised in church and weren't serving the Lord when I was a young kid, my family still made a big deal about Christmas. Amen? And even though everybody wasn't living right, we're celebrating Jesus coming to earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Let's begin with verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. Okay, let me, can I dive deep just for a second? In Neoplatonism, which was a prominent the uh, philosophy at this time, they believed in what was called the Word or the Logos or Lagos that was a controlling, that was a supernatural-like uh, power in the universe. Let me just simplify it. And so when they would talk about this Word or Logos, the people of this day understood it. Oh, you're talking about you know, Plato's idea of the controlling Logos in the universe. Yeah, but John knew this. And when John starts describing Jesus coming to earth, he says, yeah, in the beginning was the Logos, or the Word, but guess what? The Word was with God, and the Word was God. That Logos was God. Now, what's even more astounding is that He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the light was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Can somebody say amen? amen. Look on down into John 1, verse 14. 
and the Logos, or the Word, became flesh and dwelt among us. So John is saying this power that we've known, this Word, this mind of God, yet yeah, was a real thing. And it was God. And yet that Word became flesh and dwelt among men. That term dwelt, in the, I'm sorry I'm going so deep here, I didn't plan to do this. But that word dwelt in, the, in one form of the original language is the term skene, which we get from the Hebrew word shekinah. And the Shekinah was the glory of God that was in the Old Testament tabernacle and Old Testament temple. And now John is saying that glory that was in the Old Testament temple and tabernacle was manifested in a person. And that person we call the Word of God. And that person was Jesus Himself. The Word made flesh, the glory of God tabernacled in a human form. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I want to run around this building about right now. Why? Because I'm telling you, God didn't leave us alone. He didn't leave us to our own sin. He didn't leave us to our own destruction. He didn't leave us in darkness. But He sent light, revelation, salvation from above. And it wasn't just an angel that came. It wasn't just a seraphim that came. It wasn't just a prophet that came or a preacher that came. God said, I myself will step out of the throne room and take on the form of a man and come down and walk among people with the glory that I possess yet hidden in a person. Oh, hallelujah. But John describes it like this. Light came into the world. The light shines in the darkness but the darkness did not comprehend it. That's the way John describes it. Light came into the world. Light came. What does light mean? Light represents salvation. Light represents revelation and understanding. Light represents righteousness and truth. And light has now shone into the world. And people didn't comprehend it, but it doesn't negate the fact that light still came into the world. Now, I want to take this word light, L-I-G-H-T, and I want to use it as an acronym, and I want to use each of those letters to describe why Jesus came to earth. Y'all can roll with me, say amen. amen. First of all, L, he came to let us know what God was like. He came to let us know what God was like. You see, it would be harder for us to relate to a God whom we've never seen. It would be harder for us to relate to a God who had never become man. But since God has become man, it's easier for us to relate to Him. John 12, 46, Jesus said, I have come as a light into the world, that whoever believes in Me should not abide in darkness. He's come into the world so we can understand better who God is, and He's brought understanding and revelation and light. Are you confused this morning? Are you confused about your destiny? Are you confused about your future? Are there some things that are going on in your life right now that just aren't right? You've got some family issues, some kids going crazy? Some finances that have gone south? I don't know. I don't know what your issues are, but I can guarantee you some of y'all are wrestling with some stuff. Why? Because it's, it's life, right? I'm telling you, God has come in. Christmas is about this. God's not left you alone. He's not left you in your confusion and wrestling in the dark and trying to scramble for answers and walking through this life without supernatural help. He's come to let God know, let you know what God is like in your life. And He's come to say, I'm turning the lights on. I'm turning the lights on and I'm going to let understanding and revelation shine in to your heart. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? 
John 14, verse 9, Jesus said to the disciples, Have I been with you for such a long time and you still don't know who I am? He who has seen the Father has seen me. If you've seen me, you know what God's like. God came to turn the lights on because He has an amazing world, an amazing plan of salvation, an amazing DNA structure He put in each one of us, amazing future for you, amazing gifts and talents and abilities that He's stacked you with. And He's placed you in here and given you the green light. That you don't have to walk in confusion, despair, hopelessness. You don't have to do that. Christmas can be a difficult time. Last year, Christmas was horrific for me because I had COVID at the beginning of December and I had to stay locked in for several weeks at the house. Then Christmas came. We, weren't, we shut the church down. I stayed in my house for so many weeks. My first Christmas without my wife. And I was like, I got to a point that I just cried for days. So I know, some of y'all walking through it, I understand, man. But I'm telling you what, Jesus is the answer. He didn't come to leave us hopeless. He came to light up Christmas and light up your life. Come on, high five somebody around you. Say, God wants to light up your life. L, I got four more to go and a short time to get there. I, everybody say I. I. God came to inform us of his plan. John 18, 37. Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king then? And Jesus answered, you say rightly that I'm a king. For this cause was I born. And for this cause I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. God came in the form of a man, to tell you what his plan was. What is his plan? Ephesians 1.9, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, that he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will. God came to tell us He wanted a family. He came to tell us, I want a family. And I want a family that's redeemed. Redeemed out of the sin-cursed world. And that family, I'm going to bless with an inheritance. And that inheritance is so amazing Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man what God has prepared for us. How many would love to inherit a few million dollars from one of your loved ones? Four honest people in this church. Come on, let's be honest, I'm telling you. I have something greater than several million dollars. I have something greater than the, all the money or all the gold in California. I have something greater than that that I'm preaching about this morning. I have an inheritance I'm talking about that's going to last you throughout eternity. Hallelujah. It won't rust. It won't grow old. People can't break in and steal it. It's in heaven's bank account. Hallelujah. It's called eternal life. It's all the blessings of the Father. He said we are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ means he's splitting heaven right down the middle. My name's on one side and Jesus' is, <laughs> is evidently on the other side. We're heirs and joint heirs with him. And, what, and the cool thing is, I don't have to wait to heaven to experience that. I'm feeling it right now this morning in this church. Come on, we've taken hold of the promises of God by faith and I'm walking in the inheritance of God right now. Somebody put your hands together and shout hallelujah. He lets us know what God is like and he informs us of the will of God for our lives. Everybody say G. G. He comes to guide our steps. John chapter 8 verse 12. Then Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness but shall have light. How many knows light is important? Most of us have candles or have flashlights around for when the electricity goes off, right? I have a big, I, 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 this is a classic story. I have a big, one of those big looking like police black flashlights. 
on my kitchen counter and it never works. <laughs> Why do I have it there? Just in case. It might work in case I needed it one day. So when the lights go out, you know, you can, it's not fun to walk through your house in darkness. I've had too many bad experiences walking through my house in the dark and slamming my little toe against the coffee table. Sorry for being so graphic. My little toe right now is solid black. You know why? Because I slammed it into the coffee table a few weeks ago. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> but when you turn the flashlight on, everything changes, right? Everything changes. Even a candle helps. Everything changes. Light comes to help guide your footsteps. Light comes to push, the, push it a little bit further out in front of you so you know what's going on. God has come to do the very same thing in our lives. He came not to leave us without any way forward. He came to show us, I have the next step in your life. I have the next season of your life waiting on you. And I don't have to sit around depressed thinking my life's over because I know God's already out in front of me. And God's already got the next season working. He already has it stirred up for me. I can't see it yet, but I'm going to walk into the next thing God has for me. You're going to walk into the next thing God has for you. That's what faith tells us, that God's not going to leave us. Sorry, man, 2020, I'm out of, GPS is going to fail. All the satellites are going down. I'm not going to speak to you anymore. You, sorry, no. God's like, I'm already in 2022. I'm already working the relationships, opening the doors, making the connections. I'm already writing your plan. I'm already writing out your story. All you have to do is walk in it and follow my spirit. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You know what? You, you might ask, well, why doesn't God just give us our whole life, um, you know, from birth? We, from birth, he gives us a blueprint. This is what you're going to do when you're four. <laughs> this is what you're going to do when you're 15. This, because that's not what life is about. Several reasons why. Number one, it would scare us to death. Number two, I think God wants us to make the decisions and He works with us in the decisions. I'm not such a sovereignty guy that I believe, you know, like the story goes that there was one, I shouldn't tell this, so I won't tell it. There was a preacher who believed in predestination and sovereignty so much that he was walking through a building and he fell down a staircase. And when he got up at the bottom, he said, thank God that's over with. <laughs> because it was planned, thank God I got that over with. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Y'all ain't had enough coffee today, I'm telling you. No. I, I don't believe in that. I believe God works with us in the contingencies of life. He guides us and he lets us. He kind of gives us the keys to the shop. He's, yeah, he's overarchingly sovereign but he says now I give you the ability to make the decisions I'm going to help guide you I'm going to help guide you Hans can you actually go against the will of God yes you can decide not to follow him God may show you the flashing lights and you turn and take an exit and you go the other way some of us have made mistakes that we knew wasn't God's will for our lives but we did them out of rebellion or out of ignorance or out of pride or whatever. But thank God for mercy and thank God for forgiveness and thank God for second chances. Come on, every one of us are the product of a second chance in life. Hallelujah. God has come to guide your steps, folks. He's come to guide you. He's here. He's not left you alone. Start calling out to Him. Start asking Him. Get into the Scripture. God's going to open up the future before you. You may not see it now, but after a while, you're going to say, Oh, look, you were with me, Lord, in every one of those decisions. In every one of those turns, God, you were guiding and directing my steps. Can somebody shout hallelujah? L-I-G-H. Everybody shout H. H. He came to heal every hurt. 
John 12, 47. If anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him, for I didn't come to, the, to judge the world, but to save the world. I didn't come to judge the world, but to save the world. I believe every one of us have been wounded in some way. Maybe emotionally, maybe, I don't know, you, you've been through stuff in your life. All, but maybe you've experienced grief. Maybe you've experienced loss. Maybe you've experienced uh, somebody leaving you, desolation. Or, or you've experienced some type of hurt, no matter how successful, no matter how sophisticated, no matter how educated you get. Some of us still carry hurt. And the key is allowing God in and allowing Him to fill all of those hurt places. And allowing Him to pour the oil of the Holy Spirit into every one of those hurt places. And I'm telling you, and then what God does with it is He turns it into a testimony. If you allow Him. He then turns that hurt or that disappointment or that loneliness, He turns it into a testimony so you can use it to minister to other people. Come on, all of us have scars and we're walking through life with scars and our scars are just testimonies. Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Yeah, I've been through what you've been through. And it's not easy. I'm walking where you walk. You know, it's so powerful to get with somebody who's walked where you've walked. You need some friends that are spirit-filled, Holy Ghost, wonderful praying people who understand where you are. Amen? Maybe if you're a mother, you need a mother that's lived through some things, raised some kids, thought she's going to lose her mind at night when they wouldn't stop crying. But she made it. You need to talk to some people like that. Grandmas too. Lord knows they know more. Yeah, I, thought, I think about my, don't you think about your grandpa? I think about my grandparents a lot. How they made it through some hurt. And they still love some Jesus. Yeah? They made it through all of that. My grandmother buried one of her children before they were, I think, before a year old. She had died in the crib. And I think about that. And she went on and lived. I think about my mother-in-law who buried her mama when she was seven and had to quit school and take care of the rest of that family. There were 17 of them when it was all said and done. And I sat with her the other night before Thanksgiving, and she's talking about how good God is. Amen. The goodness of God, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And here we're upset if we can't, the traffic light don't turn in time. There's some people been through some stuff in this world, folks. And God came to heal our hurts. Can you lift your hand and just say, thank you, Jesus. God, just thank you. You didn't leave us down here just wounded without help. You came. Final thing is the T. Everybody say T. He came to transform your life. That's what I prayed this morning with the leaders. I said, God, let transformation happen today. Because God doesn't want you to stay in your mess. See, some people come to church with all their junk and all their mess and want to add Jesus on. And add him on to all that stuff. And the equation doesn't work that way. you got to let go of all of that stuff. And allow him to come as the main and primary thing in your heart. And when you do that, then he'll transform everything. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5.17, He who is in Christ is a not a reformed, not a refurbished. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are new. 
I just, I've always had this belief. It happened to me and I can't get away from it. When you come to the Lord, He totally works you over head to toe. He changes your heart. And once He, he starts on the inside and starts working to the outside. And once He starts on the inside, everything becomes new. You think differently. You walk differently. You talk differently. Your desires are different. Why? Because the King of the universe came in. Light came in. And now there's total transformation in your heart and you're a new creation. That's what Christmas is about. That's what it's about. Gifts are good and candy's good and cakes are good. Christmas dinner is great. But the greatest thing is I'm a new believer. I'm going to get up on Christmas morning saved. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed Christmas Eve saved. Knowing that if Jesus split the eastern sky, I'm going to meet him in the air. Hallelujah. Be it on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Day, next year, 2025. I don't know. I'm saved and I've been transformed. Hallelujah. Not perfect, but I've been saved and I've been sanctified. <laughs> I've been filled with the Holy Ghost and set aside and transformed. I'm not the guy I used to be. I'm not the man I used to be. He took the old clothes off of me and gave me some new clothes. Hallelujah. He took the old garments away and gave me a new garment. And now he says, now Hans, you can really run, son, because you're a new creation. I've come down from heaven, transformed you, turned you into somebody you never thought you could be, and now your future is bright. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, your inheritance is amazing. Yeah, Peter Drucker said, when asked, why did you accept Christ? He said, I couldn't find a better deal. I mean, I, I, that's not dumbing it down. It's just the fact. I couldn't find a better deal than grace. Because grace comes and brings forgiveness, not based on works. And we think, oh, the only way I can be forgiven or get over this stuff in my past is if I work, 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 or give, 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 or do, do. But God just says, just believe. Just believe and you're saved by grace, not by works. So listen, I want to pray for you today. If you're not serving the Lord, if you've never accepted Him into your heart, all you have to do is believe. Open your heart and believe. And let the wonder of Christmas come in. Come on, pray with me right now. Father, I confess all my sins and I turn from my sins. And Lord Jesus, I accept You into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. In Christ's name we pray. You can say amen where you are. Come on, if you need prayer for healing, I want to pray for you right now. We have people watching us all over the world. And we've had many, many healing testimonies. So let's believe if you have depression, anxiety, something internal or a physical need, let's believe for your healing right now. Come on, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for healing virtue to flow to each person watching right now who's believing by faith. And God, I pray that You would heal them right now in Jesus' name. Heal their hurts, heal their wounds, heal their bodies. And we give You praise for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. You can say amen. Thank you again for joining me. My information is below. We'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you for joining us each week as we dig into the Word. Okay? God bless, and I'll see you next week. Look straight ahead, my face towards the sun